Real Agriculture Soybean School is brought to you by Basic Seeds and Lollamond Plant Care. Bernard Tobin on the Soybean School today down in Simcoe, Ontario, catching up with Henry Prinzen from Amazing Seeds. Sir, how you doing? I'm doing great, Bernard. Yourself? I'm doing good. I'm going to get better because we're going to talk sulfur. A lot of conversations this winter about sulfur, the impact of getting the right rate of sulfur on soybeans. Horse Bonner. Sean Castile did a lot of work, a lot of conversations about it, and they talked about some of the work Mazix did last year. 27 bushels um, in a plot, just a stone's throw from here. Um, tell us about that, and tell us about what you're up to this year. Yeah, Burn. so we had crazy good results. That was our second year of doing trials. We had pretty good results, you know, 15-something bushels the first year we went down the road. We got 27, really dialing in sulfur on soybeans, and we're finding these fields you know, in southern Ontario specifically, and we're expanding that region too, but where the lower CEC soils, they don't have enough sulfur, and they're really paying back big time on soybean yields. And we're seeing that here again this year, one of the most visual sites I've ever walked for sulfur. Yeah, so you're gonna get nodulation, you're gonna get better nitrogen utilization, um, gonna get bigger seeds, you know, bigger yield. That's right, Burn. Like we just, we're gonna see this all the way through every year. We see a little bit longer stay green. We maybe leaf drop is more uniform, not as long. But at the end of the day, harvest timing is about the same. But we got that little bit later stay green, just like we're looking for in corn, to maximize seed weight and maximize those yields. So let's take a walk around this plot. We're seeing lots of evidence of that sulfur impact again this year. Let's walk through it, Burn. Okay, Henry, let's kick it off with a look at, I guess, the check here, your baseline, what do you got? Yeah, Burn. so the trial consists of paired plots. So we have two varieties each time when we're looking at the treatments. And we have a control, a none. We have fungicide alone. We have AMS alone. We have a gypsum product called Sulfur Plus alone. Uh, we have AMS plus a fungicide. We got our fully loaded package that got us really excited last year. That's pure yield, slow release nitrogen, 100 pounds of it, plus 100 pounds of AMS and a fungicide. And this year, our last treatment is a 2x rate of AMS. So let's go take a look. So right here, we're looking at the control plots burn and what we see, you know, they're tough, they're thin, they're yellow. Uh, we're probably not getting much nodulation and we're even maybe picking up a touch of SDS in a couple of the varieties already. So there's a cool interaction. Sulfur sometimes can help delay or even suppress how bad SDS is in the plant. It's kind of a cool interaction. We'll see what some of the results from the U.S. show as well as they're doing some research on that too. So, Burn, let's go over here and we'll look at our next product, uh, a Sulfur Plus Gypsum. That's kind of interesting because we don't have any nitrogen in that product. We just have calcium sulfate. And what you're seeing here, it kind of backs the sulfur story. Really lush looking beans compared to the none over there, right? Our control. This is just a sulfur plot, basically, when we're talking gypsum. And we're getting that bigger robust canopy much healthier looking plant you can tell there's more nitrogen the plant's just a lot darker green these are the same pair of varieties that were over there but we're getting way better plant health let's go a little further down um, we're going to look at just ams alone ams has kind of been our you know our golden standard when we're talking about these plots because last year we looked at ams and we looked at another product called uh, polysulfate these were sulfur products without the nitrogen component and they were yielded really well, but not quite as well as AMS. So our, you know, our golden standard in Ontario is this treatment here. So again, you can see maybe even a little more robust canopy, little darker green, maybe that nitrogen synergy with that sulfur in AMS, helping to get us a little further down the road of big yields on beans. So we're really excited about this. This is kind of our standard recommendation to guys that are interested in trying it is Hey, 75 to 100, this would be 100 pounds of AMS applied at planting. All our treatments are 100 pounds, except our final treatment where we did a 2x rate of uh, AMS. Then here, we just go across the row here. This is our fully loaded package last year. This is where we got this big 27 bushel gain. We're using a fungicide, some slow release nitrogen pure yield, 100 pounds of it, and our 100 pounds of AMS to kind of maximize stay green in the plant, right? We're using a late fungicide in R3 application. We don't want to go too early because we want to maximize 
stay green late season to maximize bean weight and maximize yield. Now Burn, I'm really excited to take you down the road. Let's go take a look at the 2X rate of AMS. Here's our 2X sulfur rate. This is what we're really excited about here. I didn't know if we'd see that much difference, but we're getting really big, lush plants, maybe even a little more growth out of these than the other treatments we saw was just the AMS one at, like the one times AMS or the gypsum. We're beside our check plot and you can just see how lush these 2X rate, you know, 200 pounds applied at planting of AMS. Look, we're really excited about it. Um, we're really gonna have to see the yields. I think there might be more here, Bird, than we thought. Maybe this is our real ticket and not the AMS plus pure yield. Maybe it's our 2X rate on some of this lighter ground. So some amazing plots, Henry. Let's, let's, what about the takeaways here? I mean, let's go back through the season. We started with some cold conditions, planting early. You, you know, what type of impact do you think we had there? So that'll be interesting, Burn. The guys that did put some sulfur out, I saw some visual differences early in the season at those sites, right? Even in Oxford County, you know, I had some small plots and wow, the AMS was darker green, maybe a little more lush with that cold weather. We're not getting that mineralization we talk about. So when we couple early planting, cold conditions with big soybeans, there might be a play on more acres with this AMS. Let's talk about nodulation. You've pulled two plants here, one from the check and one from the double, uh, the double rate. What do you got? Pretty amazing, Bernay. Eh? Like when we look at this, you can look at, see how little these nodules are and how few there are on the check plot. We go over to our 2X rate of AMS and wow, a lot of bigger nodules, a lot of healthy nodules, right? We got that pink inside of them. They're all healthy pink nodules and bigger nodules, significantly bigger nodules, bigger plant, more advanced as well. So it, it's gonna translate to yield. We already know that burn. It's just how much is it gonna be? A lot of talk over the winter about, hey, you know, maybe it only works on sand. But hey, this isn't exactly blow sand here. This is a, this is a loam. Yeah, so that's what's surprising. Everyone thinks, oh, you're in Norfolk County on the your tobacco sand. Well, we actually don't grow tobacco on this field because it's not light enough, right? We're on a, a sandy loam. Um, is it light? Yeah, absolutely. But is it a 5 CEC? No, you're, you know, 10 to 15 CEC here. This is good ground. We can pull off some big yields even in a year right now. We've got very limited water here and we have pretty good crops. So that just tells you there's probably more places this is going to work than you think. Great stuff, Henry. We're going to see some, see and hear some results this winter. Oh yeah, we're really excited. We'll do our publication always. And I'm sure we'll talk about this in the winter meetings again. You can find more episodes of the Soybean School by going to soybeanschool.com or finding the Real Agriculture YouTube channel.